people who take ecstasy, they can go after 45 minutes, they, they reach, there is the amphetamine or MDNA who kicks, there is a hormonal thing on the gland, you feel good. You know, even the wind comes, you say, oh my God, I would love. It. So if your wife said, but you're not the spiritual guy that everybody thinks you are. That, that's <laughs> shocking. I was said in the history of Sajmak, I was the only bachelor that Chariji must stay in my house. Each of us, we need a guide in our life. And look, I'm born as a Muslim. I practice Islam. What do you do the next day? Will you take ayahuasca every day? For me, heartfulness is the purest form of how you became one with yourself and connect to your heart. Just don't follow the trend because you're scared to be judged or you're scared that people will not react. The intention should be that people should feel it in their heart. Woof, woof. Welcome to a special New Year episode of KanaCast. Today I am speaking to Pierre Ravan. Pierre is a DJ and you will hear some of his music in this episode. He has recently launched a line of luxury perfumes and has a lifelong involvement in the world of fashion and glamour. He is also a yoga teacher and a heartfulness meditation trainer and effortlessly straddles the worlds of luxury and spirituality. Namaste, Pierre Ravan. It's so wonderful to have you in the Kana studio. Namaste, Rudy. Thank you for see taking you the time out and coming here. It's so lo lovely to see you again. It's lovely to see you. It's always lovely to see you. And uh, we got lucky this time in that right in the new year, you're here at this time. That was and amazing. you're, of course, a DJ, a music producer. Also, you have your own line of perfumes. You've been in the fashion industry. It's, <laughs> I mean, you've done everything. You're a yoga trainer. You're a meditation teacher. It's, uh, you, you dabbled in so much journey. stuff. <laughs> it's been amazing. So you, you're here, of course, uh, immediately after Sunburn, the big gig in Goa. And, uh, you know, Sunburn has been part of the calendar, the music calendar in India for a long time. And it's one of the festivals everyone looks forward to. Being in Goa over New Year's is, uh, of course, everyone in India makes a beeline for there. And it's where the party is happening pretty much. So how was that? How was the gig this time around? How did you get involved? See, I'm working with the Sunburn people already for a long time, because the creator of Sunburn, he, he himself was one of the oldest DJs in India. And he, part of the commercial lineup, as you know, Sunburn is mostly very commercial, big crowd, 75,000 people. They have a lot of EDM. But then he realized that there is needed more of the soul into music. And my style of music was something that they really wanted. That's why every year I play. But this year was very special for me. Because this year, I wanted to really see the change in the music industry. As you know, there's a lot of change happening in the level of consciousness, unconsciously or consciously. And I wanted to experience that to see if this is also happening in the music scene. And of course, I, I was, I'm working on a new track, which is The Surprise. And I wanted to test it in such a crowd before releasing it, kind of. And it was a good experience, but I feel that even in that experience, things need to be changed now. It's time also for Sunburn to change a bit as far as the structure is concerned. And mm, sure. You spoke about your new track, uh, Back to Source. I just heard it before this recording. I mean, I heard, it's, a, it's a beautiful track. How did that come about? even the name Back to Source. And it came when I realized we all go back to source. And I realized that how wonderful to be to make a track which give us that feeling that would this track give me that appetite to how I will be the journey of the music go through that. And we were very lucky. We, we, I produced this music with uh, other two collaborators. And few big shot remixed it because everybody loved it so much. A lot of live instrument and the whole journey, which you will gonna play this track for them, for our audience to listen. And I realized that 
2024 maybe is a track that everybody will realize that this life is a transit. We pass and we go back to source in our own way. And I said, maybe that would be an amazing way to express it. And what better than music? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, in the track, you've used African vocals, you know, and uh, a lot of people believe that all of humanity actually came from Africa originally. That's what uh, a lot of historians tell us, a lot of anthropologists tell us. So was that a natural choice uh, or uh, have you been drawn to African rhythms and music even earlier? To be honest, I wanted to mention something very important. For example, if you listen to the African music, I've talked about the, the real African music, it's very similar to South of Iran music. It's very similar to a lot of old culture, which there was tribals. Means music was, you've realized, wow, it was all the same because it's from the source. They were using the music from the source. And when I started to do make this track, I realized that, for example, Diva Sonic, she's, she's a very dear producer living in the US, she play a live flute, but also the pan drum. Mm -hmm. Means we wanted to also bring different culture into that and use the Afro vocal, which give you that, essence of how to go back to the source. But we brought in also a lot of other element to expose the universality of the music as the core. Mm. Like when we talk about yoga, we talk about, let's say, samadhi. What is samadhi? Samadhi is we want to go back to the origin state that we were. That's why in our meditation, especially in heartfulness meditation, true pranahuti, this is what we can instantly feel. And I wanted to do the same with the music. What will take me back to that samadhi of music, which is back to source? That's why we put a lot of heart in it. Of course, because it's not commercial, not many people like it, but it's okay. Few hearts that they feel it, I think the work is done. Absolutely. What was the response like at Sunburn? What did people think of the track? Look, we had a lot of mixes. I play a remix of Bodhisattva, which is very pumping because, you know, Sunburn, they need it. And the response was amazing because I had people really coming and said, wait a minute, you cross the genre of the music and you play that and we like it. And it was a sign for me, especially for the new DJs, new young DJs to tell them, don't be scared. Play the music from the heart. Just don't follow the trend because you're scared to be judged or you're scared that people will not react. Mm. If you play it nice and this is music from the heart, you will touch hearts. And people came to me and asked, what is this track? Well, and maybe minority, I would say, but that was good enough for me. Sure, sure. And something unusual that you have done previously in your gigs as well is like uh, when somebody goes to a gig and uh, wants to party, they are ready to be dancing and moving and being on the dance floor. But something that you do is you sometimes start with a meditation session. Uh, how, does, how did you come across that? How did you decide to do that? You see, I want to people know what is music first. Music is coming from the heart. As you know, Sufi always said, they said it's a direct picture of the beloved. Why? Because that's where the soul is connected with, not the body. And when the soul is connected, the best way is that in the crowd, be it 10 people or 1 million people, you can find a way that those hearts and the soul get united. Then you're creating the real party, right? And what is the means of connecting hearts? in my understanding, is only through meditation. And when, let's say, you meditate together, you create that egregore that we all know. But we are familiar with it when you go for the group meditation. That people will don't ask. But on the dance floor, people say, but no, what, what are you doing? But imagine that level of the energy that before they start to dance, you make them sit and you connect the hearts and then you start the beat. That unity that you create can be only created through meditation. 
But what is happening in this new world? Now you can find a lot of such a thing. You have a lot of people doing that. They do yoga, meditation, then the music. It's happening. But as I mentioned to many of my associates and friends, not many of them are genuine. It's nice. It's a hype now. You know, people want to go special on psychedelic events, using, let's say, even natural substances. The intention is good. The intention is good. But are they really be able to connect genuinely to the heart? I doubt because I experience it. I go to the gigs. I see what other people do. And I feel that the future of parting, it's a conscious parting, means you need to connect them to the heart. Then the music by itself will be enough. And trust me, you don't need any chemical intoxication to reach that level of connection with the source. How beautiful. How beautiful. You originally, you are from Iran, uh, Pierre. Yeah, I'm Persian, yes. <laughs> you're, you're, you're Persian. So uh, is the, does the Sufi culture influence you a lot? And the, we have a lot of music in Sufi culture as well. There's the, of course, the whirling dervishes everybody is familiar with. And, and there's always this music. So has that played a big part in your life? Definitely, because you see, Sufism, uh, I was I was exposed to that, especially Sufi music, but Sufi music has different genres. For example, remember, if you go toward the Pakistan side, they have Qawwali, which they consider as a Sufi. But the purest Sufi music, which was coming even before Rumi's time, is the music that really, especially the drum side, which we call daf, or the tambur, or the tar, it's really tuning the soul. And you realize the word trance that everybody even use now in the house music, they call it the genre trance music. It was the music that through that sound, through that notes, people are going through that trance mood. But let's not confuse trance and the 432 hertz frequency music because yes, we have the science, that with you play a music which has the frequency of 432, it takes you to that state. And uh, that state that you're calm. But we are not talking about that. That is, you can use if you want to have sleep better. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even use it for meditation because I feel there is a deeper way of meditating. But I'm talking about the music that really touches your soul, the core of it. And Sufism played a lot in my production especially. Because I realized that in all my production, the intention should be that people should feel it in their heart. Mm. That's why Sufi music always was part of Absolutely. my heart. Yes. Absolutely. And Pierre, you've been a meditation trainer, a heartfulness meditation trainer for a long time. When did that journey start for you? It was like 22 years ago. And, wow. And for me, it was amazing because I was pondering about it because I meet a lot of people when you ask them, for example. Why would you like to meditate? Why are you looking to find a meditation path? I think majority of people or they're heartbroken or they're depressed, or something they needed to latch on, and they said maybe this spirituality will save them. My case was totally opposite. I was not depressed. I, 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 had, I was famous. I had the beautiful uh, parents. But in my case, it was so different because I was looking at what is supporting this life of mine. Where am I going? That's why... I tried many paths. I tried TM. As you see, we have now the TM team. Yes. We have 10,000 TM practitioners. I started that. It was very nice. I am grateful for that. But again, it took me to a level and I said, what's next? And for me, it was no next step. Then I started Sufism and I enjoyed it because it was beautiful. Because as you know, in Islam, we have a part which is called Ehsan. You have Islam. Iman and Ehsan. And Ehsan in Islam 
is one of the very strong pillar, means doing the beautiful. Anything which comes from the heart, in Islam we call Ihsan. And Sufis took that Ihsan part. And for me, that Ihsan part was beautiful, the journey. But again, it took me to a level, I said, would I be able to get self-realization? And for that, it took me to where I am today. And to be honest, I really realized that I'm nowhere. Means the path that I'm doing with Hoffman is I realize, oh my God, there is so much work that I have to do on myself. And I never knew that. Mm -hmm. Only heartfulness way thought me that, my friend, you have a long way. Hurry up. <laughs> and uh, how much influence does heartfulness have on your music, Pierre? You see, I feel that it's very important for people who are listening understand what the real heartfulness verse is. What is heartfulness? Is this a path or is this, let's say, a meditation practice? For me, heartfulness is the purest form of how you became one with yourself and connect to your heart and truly get all your inspiration from the heart, right? And if you are going towards purity and simplicity, that's exactly where the heart can totally blossom. And I realized that as more I'm getting deeper to that level, and hopefully, and inshallah, the level of the consciousness is expanding, I realize that I can hear things, I can see things, I can, even though that I'm not a composer, but I can produce a music which is purely from the heart. And I feel that was the gift of heartfulness. In what sense? In the sense that he taught me how to really be able to listen to my heart. Sometimes painful because we don't like it. Hmm. Because as we know, heart always alarm you on the things that you should not be doing. And we don't like to hear it. Sure. In many cases, I don't really like to hear it. But at least I acknowledge it. Not that maybe I'm not doing them. I also <laughs> acknowledge that, that am I still doing them? But at least I'm aware. Hmm. And that again, go back to what heartfulness means. I, bottom line, Rudy, want to say, heartfulness is a path of lions. Hmm. If you want to be a lion, this is the way. Because to be a lion-hearted, you need to really be strong, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But, um, you know, in every journey, there are some times when you go through uh, difficult times. How do you pick yourself up? I mean, even, even musically, lots of people go through a musical block where they can't uh, produce anything for some time. Like writers have writer's block, artists can't paint. And uh, similarly, the musician's journey, the, as a producer, music producer, you must, do you ever come across that time where, listen, I can't, I just can't do anything right now. And how do you get over that? I have to be honest. I always say jokingly, I literally only face that. <laughs> <laughs> but not only musically, you know, you face that in your business. As you know, we will talk about later in my perfume business, hmm. uh, even in a family life, even in your health. And sometimes you realize, because when you have expectation out of something and it's not happening, then you question two things, or you question yourself, or you question the path that you're following, right? There's nothing, because we, it's our humanness that we start to say, but this is not working, you know? Be why? Because I realize we always translated, if things are, we are successful, then things are perfect. If we are healthy, everything is good. Relationship go well, everything is good. And you say, what a beautiful path I'm going, everything is going well. The many things go wrong, you say, but wait a minute, this, this is not working. But in my life, I saw that when you go deep, deep, and you see the roots of it, you realize that actually when things are going really, really wrong, there is something that we have to learn from it. And when I say learn from it is that it might not be pleasant, but you realize that there is something that maybe needs to be removed, 
to be able then mm. to move on means actually i realize that only these hurdle and problems unfortunately i have to admit it's the only way for us to to grow because if you're always in the comfort zone you're not like making music like i made so much music and nobody wanted it even back to source i signed with the label which it was somebody who loved it the owner of the of the label he said i love the track and i would say that so many other label that i was 100% sure they love it they said this is not what you like it's not good enough then what do you think you you lose your confidence because you say oh was my heart wrong but i realized the heart is never wrong it's 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 a journey and i feel that uh, the pain make me grow mm-hmm. but sometimes i have to be also honest i just say can you give me a little bit of relief <laughs> I can't take it anymore. But that's again you man. We should also not be sh- ashamed or shy to acknowledge our weaknesses, you know? Sure, sure. This is not the this is not the game to play. We have to say, you know, I am I feel weak in that. I need a little bit of relief till I can put my head up out of the pool. Take a deep breath and then again <laughs> go deep. <laughs> So along with the spiritual journey of, of uh, keeping uh, you know your spiritual body in good health you've also been very much uh, physically you've been always been working out and keeping yourself in good health do you think that is important uh, I think it's it goes hand in hand is the most important you see even in heartfulness when you read everybody was talking about you know we all start by dhyana which is the meditation and everybody say yeah but we don't need to do anything else but again I personally feel in my life because I had some health issues a couple of years ago and I realized that if I didn't have the spirit of really working out and trying to keep my body strong I would have been collapsing now It means you have a body that you need to respect and I realized that keeping a healthy body is not only to go to the gym and working out is truly always nourish it with a good food with a good workout and regardless what age you are you know I'm a I'm a yoga certified teacher but I will not be able to st- stand long on my head or or cross leg for a long time but that's not the true yoga again a lot of people think oh but you're the yoga teacher I am a good yogi if I can surpass my limitation mm. if I can be mindful of my limitation that's why if you realize that then i think you can take a step by step look i'm 55 years old as is obvious <laughs> and and yes i my recovery or much more slower than before but i don't give up i still go to the gym if i can even 20 minute i still do my yoga i still i, I try to jog and i do that because the will power is there and mm-hmm. i for the meditator you cannot be a meditator if you will not be able to sit at least for half an hour and for that you need a strong back you need you need to work out it's a it's it's it's, it's our duty actually towards our body mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Take the And you've also been interested in the fashion industry. You've collaborated with some of the biggest fashion brands. A lot of people think that oh this is uh, vain, uh, it's not a spiritual pursuit. It's uh, just about appearances. But uh, as a as a person who's also actively engaged in a spiritual practice, how do you uh, approach it? Look, first you see what I'm wearing is my own collection like wow. but wow. but uh, To be honest, I I've been in the luxury business for the past 35 years. 35 years in luxury business, especially mostly in the in the perfume and fragrance and the cosmetic business. And I saw the evolution how it went because I not only I was I was distributing a lot of brands, I was selling a lot of brands, and I was selling in a different region, be it of the Europe, Middle East, Asia. And I saw the trend and I was dealing with a lot of shops and what i realized that 
everything which was called luxury at the time, the blink blink that we call, mm. now is changing, and I realize now the most luxurious brand. Are going towards purity and simplicity. I give you an example. Like, if you have a latest Louis Vuitton or Hermes, for example, as a bag, is under the perfume, which then I started my own brand. When you see it, you realize that all the packaging, all the messages, all the dressing of the bottles, all even the juice. All what the ingredient they're choosing, it promote that, but it's with quality. Means luxury is the trend of luxury is also changing, and I feel that we have a new level of luxury, which is, I would say, all the brands who are trendsetters, not the followers, who all the brands who are trendsetter, they're preparing the luxury towards simplicity and purity. Means when you use the product, you really feel the best quality by is simple. But don't get me wrong; people misunderstand spirituality with everything which is bio. This bio became so overrated that I'm getting tired of it. Bio cream, bio this, bio food, bio bread, and you get of course they are bio and get your stamp and you sell it three times more. But you can make a perfume which is not all bio. It can be even synthetic, but the way, the feeling, the quality, the mixture, the wholeness, the circle, which comes together, create that luxury. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. So it's more of uh, about the quality rather than ex- just uh, you have to have this kind of ingredient or that kind of ingredient. It's it's the quality of it. It's the quality. Is the storytelling absolutely? It's the quality. Is the storytelling, and it's all about if the message is there to stay for longer. Hmm. It's not the one shot thing. Absolutely. absolutely. And for that, it takes a lot of work. Create such a thing is even more difficult to make such a heavy luxury of the previous bling thing, because simplicity and purity, as much as sounds simple, but it's not as simple. Yeah, to abs- achieve that, absolutely, absolutely. Which brings me to your uh, perfume that you launched some time back, the Eternal Journey. What is the story behind that? It's not. It's not just a single perfume. Actually, it's three. And uh, tell us how that has come about. You see, I want to go back to answering to what question about heartfulness. You said how heartfulness helped you, or was you were inspired by it when you did your music? Or Eternal Journey exactly came out of the inspiration from heartfulness because life creates life; it is an eternal journey. It is. Is we are on this eternal journey all the time. It's a circle of life. Then I realized that I say I want to create a brand which is an eternal journey. And even my logo, if you see, is a circle because circle represent the wholeness. We come in is a whole. And lucky if we are in the center of that circle, you're not on the periphery because in the center you're still. And I said to myself, I want to create a brand. After being 35 years in the perfume industry, I decided let me make my own brand, and all the 35 years of experience, let me bring it with the storytelling that I have. Then I said, okay, what's your plan, Pierre? I said I want to create a brand which bring balance to life. Then I said if I have eternal journey as the core. Our life is the balance between our outside and our inner, right? Then I said, "But what is our outside life?" I said, "It's the movement. You wake up by dawn and sunrise. Even even not not the nature wakes up by sunrise. Our left nostril became my right again scientifically. There is a right because it's all connected. Then the day start. You're active. The movement. You're moving, moving constantly. Then by sunset." Again, the rhythm come down. Your right nostril became your left nostril. Again, all the systematic 
that the nature created us like that. Then again, you go through midnight. Then again, you wake up. It means we are this circle of life. We call it a movement. Then I created my first collection, only three, because I didn't want to make a long, now is a fashion, all, I would say, the niche luxury, because my brand is pure luxury and niche. They create a long, because that's the new fashion. But I said I want to have three, because I believe in three. Then I created, what is the three cycle of the day? We have a sunrise, which goes to sunset. Then you have the sunset till it goes to midnight. Then at midnight, everything changed, and you go till sunrise. means I created that cycle. I created three beautiful perfumes which represent that. And every scent of that perfume, it's scientifically taking you towards that journey. means the first scent actually activates, switches your left nostril to the, your right nostril. And for that, uh, the ingredient, you need to have something which we call petit grain, is a woody, and a mixture with neroli, which is the orange blossom. This too creates a system that gives you that push, but keeps you also zen, because it's the morning. Now, imagine you want to do yoga, or you want to walk with your dog in the forest, or pick up some mushroom, or somebody on the cycle. Whatever is your thing, what will be the scent I use for that? Then in the afternoon, you go to the office. You need something more sensual. I have a perfume which is pure myrrh and frankincense, which give you that, and the chaffron from Iran mixed a little bit, and that wow. gives you that. Then you come home. You want to go out. When you're going out, you want to make a presence. It's a midnight. You might go to dinner with your wife, or you want to go to the nightclub, or no, you go on the opera, or whatever is you. You need a present. I created something which has the most beautiful woody tonga beans with oud and with a little bit of cashmere, and it's fantastic. But when I finished that collection, we are just launching it in India with a company named uh, 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 Bakaros, which have shops in Parcos, only exclusive to them. And in 2024, which is the beautiful year to start, they will have. But for that, everybody is now waiting for the new collection. And as I was saying, that inner collection, I created a collection which is called a 3H. H1 stands for the heart, golden color. H2 stands for the harmony. It's pure white because it's a harmony. H3 stands for happiness, which is green. Because the cycle of our inner journey starts from the heart. When you tune in your heart, then you have harmony. And when you're in harmony, you're happy. You're happy. And this is something that uh, next year we will launch worldwide. And Beautiful. then the balance of eternal journey. Beautiful. And I hope all of you will experience. It's amazing. So, uh, I mean, uh, fragrance is something that is extremely subtle also. It's a very subtle thing. Like you can't see a fragrance. You can't really hold it. You can just experience it. So is that part of the allure of it to you also? Because it's like like the spiritual uh, experience as well. You can't really describe it adequately. You can just experience it. That is true. That is, And for that, it's very important that this experience on each individual is different. It's like meditation. Not two people have the same experience. And with the perfume, it's the same. Mm. And to tell you, we did a test for six months. And in the same country, and even in five shops, which are in the very close by, each perfume was, you had 33%, 33%, 33%. Means it showed me that we as a human, we are different in our experiences in the scent. And I feel scents play a very important role, not only to bring back our memories, it really connects us and let us really go through all that journey. Mm, mm. And that saying that, I want to mention that all doesn't have to be bio and organic. Like you can use a very organic lavender, but that might not even smell nice. Mm. You see, we should not again overdo the word organic bio. You can have, as I said, synthetic, but as a whole, this can create an experience to you. Mm. That's so true, and also uh, fragrance. Uh, many of us, when we have a when we have a particular memory, we remember scents from that memory, or the scent, the way a person 
uh, sm- the the smell of a person. Of you know, we remember that it's it's something that is so subtle yet is so powerful. Powerful, very powerful. It's so powerful. That's very interesting. In uh, the Sufi tradition that you are inspired by, one of the there's a great uh, sort of tradition of the Morshid and the disciple. And what is your own relationship uh, with your Murshid? Have you? Uh... It's it's a very it's a very important topic. I feel because not only in the Sufi tradition, in in the true spiritual tradition, I think Murshid or in India, my call it Guru. The word Guru is a little bit overdone, or the Aga or the Baba or the master or the guide or the mountain guide, is I realize that is so important in our evolution because we all of us need somebody who been in top of the peak of the mountain and just took our hand and take us there. And again, this can only happen if you find somebody who really has been up there, truly, reach that reality that we are all seeking. And not just the tamasha. And I realize in my life now, when I said I've been, I wouldn't even say fortunate, I think I've been grateful to find a murshid who gave me that essence and more and more he's teaching me to interiorize that. But it's also important for all of us to know that you internalize that murshid in you. But you have a living murshid. And there is a reason that you have a living murshid because that connection is there also. And ideally is to identify that. Means you have that connection. Especially in Sufism, you have a lot of personal relationship. Mm. In a lot of Hindu tradition, you might say, oh, you know, I can see my murshid in my dream or meditate. Fair enough. I am not in that level yet. I need to meet personally my Morshid. And meeting person my Morshid is not just to get attention. It's just the eye, the touch, mm-hmm. like Shamsa Tabrizi had with Rumi. Shamsa Tabrizi came and he find Rumi for a reason. Then if we don't need a living guru or master, then why we need that? You could have come in the meditation of Rumi. <laughs> the living master is important, but what we take out of it this is for us very important. Is this that we want to meet a Murshid just to be seen? Or we are meeting him to seek him? This is still the work that I'm doing on myself. And every time I meet my Murshid, I'm asking myself, am I there just because I want to be there and get that satisfaction to say, oh, he saw me. Okay, then I'm happy. Me, My ego is flattered. He saw me great. I have a great day. Or really I saw him. And I have to be honest, I'm working still on that. Mm. I hope I reach that level to really see him the way I should see him and seek him. Because that moment, if that comes, then that is a beautiful. Because then unity, that unity creates. Absolutely. And I feel every, each, each of us, we need a guide in our life. And look, I'm born as a Muslim. I practice Islam. And that's the beauty because... Even whatever religion you're born at, I realize that you still need a Murshid because the Murshid can practically get you closer to that religion that you believe on. Yes, one day you reach, inshallah, the level that you might even transcend that. But the true spirituality, it's not a cult. It's not taking you away of anything. He actually makes you even deeper and then you can see and feel essence not the peripheral mm. this is the way i see it mm. and as you said it's uh, it deepens your own relationship with whatever tradition you come from i mean in heartfulness uh, there is people from all backgrounds there are people who practice christianity people who are hindus people who are uh, practice islam people who practice judaism it's, it's a, everybody sits together and meditates and uh, it brings everybody together. But this relationship of the Murshid and the disciple, I mean, uh, even in uh, 
even in Sufism, I mean, with the Sheikh, you live you live in his household. Mm -hmm. There's that tradition of you live together, you uh, are part of it. And sometimes the lessons are not really evident that they are lessons. One is, of course, the instruction, the guidance that has been given. But there is a level of teaching that is not really the guidance, but just by some experience. Sometimes it's not also not very pleasant, that experience. It may be unpleasant. Have you, uh, uh, have you had that sort of learning also that from experience rather than by what, saying something, but just by the situation that the Murshid teaches you stuff? Yes, I had, because I'm a lover, you know, and love hurts. And for me, that experience was that, you know, because sometimes, you know, people telling you, yeah, you should not have any expe expectation. I think differently, actually. I think there is nothing wrong to be loved. I say it bluntly. I said, take it as my ego. It's nothing wrong sometimes that somebody say, I love you. Hmm. And this doesn't necessarily mean that you flatter your ego. I feel if you reach the level that can if you give you that energy to see, you know, and it's not the attention. This is the assurance that I love you. Even if I hurt you, I love you. Sometimes we need, because, you know, like we have in our prayer that we do in the night, the prayer actually what means what we do. It's not the, it's like actually you're putting yourself in the lap of God and you, I want to sleep. But when, when you're in the lap of God, you cannot say, oh, don't love me. You need that love. And I don't feel it's, it's an ego who's saying, oh, but when you have that assurance that you can take any pain. And this is what I'm trying to say. And it's good to be open and say, you know, I would like to be reminded that I have been loved. And maybe that comes from my Sufi things, that the love and the fire is there, without having any ego. Actually, it's more being ego to not acknowledge that. And he said, no, I don't have any expectation. But deep inside in your heart, if you're honest, be honest, you, you need to be loved. And I feel the relationship with the motion in one sense is very important. Because if you're truly attentive, which we call that tavajjo, the true, the real tavajjo, the real attention that you get from your guide, if you're really ready, you can progress very fast. Because he's ready to take you to the destination with a blink of the eye. But he can't because you get shattered, because you're not ready for it. And I think that readiness Again, I'm working on that part that any time I will have the opportunity to meet my Moshet, am I ready? Am I sitting in front of him just because we have a conversation? Or am I ready that if, inshallah, it's a time for me to move to a higher level of consciousness, that with no resistance he can do that? Mm -hmm. I think that he is he's craving, actually. This is the way I see my relationship. How beautiful. Just being ready, being available to him. Also, you, uh, of course, you were with Chariji uh, when you started Heartfulness. And uh, then he was your murshid at that time. And then you were friends with this gentleman called Kamlesh. He was a friend of yours. And uh, you traveled with him. You traveled around. And then in 2014, uh, Kamlesh Bhai, as we called him, uh, became the guide, the heartfulness guide. How easy or difficult was it for you to see your friend now suddenly become your murshid? You see, I, I, I really appreciate this question because not many people ask and not many people dare to answer this. One thing I wanted to say at the time, Kamlesh Bhai, you know, I, today I was telling an experience, I was sharing a story that at the time of charity, I was traveling to Satkol. You know, we talk about brotherhood, and I came, I arrived very late. I didn't have a place to stay. And he said, oh, where are you going to sleep? And the first person he said, no, let him come with me. He was at the time come. She said, he had a house at, you know, Satkol up there. And he said, no, no, I let, let, let him come, he can sleep with me. 
Then we went to his house, huge palace. But the only heated place was his bedroom. <laughs> and he said, okay, sleep with me. And I said, are you sure? You know, are you comfortable? He said, yeah, 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 sleep with me. And I remember sleeping in that bed and I was tossing around because I'm not the deep sleeper. And at 3 a.m. opened my eyes. I said, he go up and he sit for meditation. And I said, it's 3 a.m. Why is he meditating? Then I said, well, you know, maybe he likes me. Then he slept. Then again, I said about 5 a.m. Then again, he sat, he, he was meditating. Till then I got up meditating. I never dared to ask him, well, what, you know, what were you doing there? And he never spoke about it. And you know what I realized about him? That was one sense of experience. Whatever he is asking now everybody to do, he was already doing. Mm. Be it absentia sitting, be it, uh, as we know in our path, the meditation between one and three, that you connect to yourself, to the source, to get all the attributes. Then I said, you see, are we a preacher or what we want to do we're doing? And I was fortunate to travel a lot with him. And when even Chariji came, he stayed in my house. I always said, in the history of Sajmak, I was the only bachelor that Chariji master stay in my house. <laughs> with all the resistance of everybody, how can you stay in a bachelor house? You might be hungry, you know, all this. <laughs> Nobody will cook for you. <laughs> all this nonsense for the Murshid. And his answer was, because he put me all in CC and people were not happy. I follow hearts. I stay wow. with people with a pure heart. And at the time, for example, Kamlish also stayed there. You know, and, and for me, the day was the transition was, it was not the transition. That's what I wanted to explain you. And you will be surprised from first day, I was calling him master. And still today, they people call him Kamlish. But that's their thing. That's their experience. Or people call him Daji because master himself, Kamlish, but didn't like people calling him master. Because, you know, he's, in his humility, he said, call me Daji. But I call him what I want, right? I call him master. And the reason I'm calling him master, because I believe he will not get flattered by it. Just to tell you that the transition for me was very natural. Because I feel I could feel the essence. Mm. That's why it was a very, I would say, natural progression for me. And for me, he's my murshid now. And I still have dreams, Chari come, Daji come, and both of them are there. And it's amazing. And I don't, I don't see any difference. For that, I feel that we should transcend all of this. Mm. If we are true spiritual seekers, seek the essence. Mm. And then, of course, the physical form, you can joke, and that always remain. <laughs> Chari had a different humor. Sure. Our new master, Daji, has a different humor. I'm sure at the time I was not lucky. Da uh, Lalaji had a different humor. Babuji had a different humor. That's the human level. Let, let, let us see the essence. Essence is the main thing. Absolutely. So beautifully put. You mentioned that um, Chari Ji came and stayed with you when you were a bachelor. <laughs> I mean, you were you were involved in the fashion industry at that time. So I can just imagine a life in fashion, lots of, uh, you know, there must have been photographs of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you heard the story. <laughs> I heard the story. I heard a story about that you had the entire wall covered with... Uh, El Magazine picture of... Uh, <laughs> yes, because supermodels and exactly. all of that. <laughs> what was uh, what was Chariji's reaction? First, I, you forgot to mention I had a huge DJ booth in my house in okay. my apartment. Okay, and every Th night this I, is Dubai, right? This is Dubai, and I was DJing for him every night. He loved it. <laughs> Come here, go play my music. Pierre Ravan plays his music, and I was DJing for him. And of course, we had the poster, and he was looking at it and said, "That's nice, you know." <laughs> and few of our dear associates, they were already telling him. Kambi, he has this guy, the pictures, oh, you know. They scandalized. He, they were scandalized. They, they were scandalized. And he was coming and said, are you guys scared of those pictures? Good. <laughs> and, and this was a big lesson for everybody. Put your prejudice on the side, you know. Put it on the side. Move on. Move all this. And for me, that was the best trip because he stayed for five, six days. We had a blast playing music, watching movies every night together. Of course, it was a small apartment, but again, a sign that, you know, the beloved and the lover, you know, you can't separate them hmm. as much as you can at that time. And that it was a lovely experience. Hmm. 
Another very important part of heartfulness practice is being a householder, you know, being a, a family man. And you are a family man. You have a family. Um, um, how does that, you feel, contribute to your spiritual practice also? I have to be very honest with you. I think this is now the highest practice is the family life. Don't get me wrong. I, when I say practice in the sense that I realize if I wasn't married, I wouldn't realize things about myself that needs to be rectified. I mean, you can call my wife. She will tell you all the lines. <laughs> and I realized that after my marriage, I tried to change, but still maybe not into the satisfactory level yet. But I feel this is the only way for all of us to really see what needs to be changed. But also acknowledge that the limitation that we have. And especially my marriage, to surprise a lot of people, being in the music industry, fashion industry, I decided I got married in the system. Without dating, without everything, with full faith, I've been married in the system. And in this marriage, it's 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 amazing because when you get this word out of a master saying, I want you guys married with my assurance of the union of the hearts. This is a big statement. Now, this statement, sometimes I read it 10 times to remind myself. But what is the part of my work into that? Is this, as we say in French, la vie en rose, everything goes well here. Yeah, that, that, oh, what have you... What about the challenges that you face in your married life? That's why I truly believe a spiritual marriage is very, very important. Even in the extent I see how people can marry non-spiritually because the challenges, Rudy, especially, you know, I have four kids, especially you realize now the world is not the same world and challenges will be there. I wonder how people will do without spirituality. Honestly, I ask myself, how would I at least do without it? And I realize spirituality is only letting me, in some extent, I have to be honest, subdue my ego. Still the ego is there, obviously. Try to be a better listener. Still I am maybe not, again. But only spirituality gives you. If you are sincere, spiritual seeker, then you look at into it and it without justifying, especially if your wife call you, you're not a spiritual person, which that hurt, hurt <laughs> you to the core. <laughs> she might listen to it now and say, well, why are you? Uh, <laughs> no, but, but we've all, we've yeah, all gone through you that. Are, it's, uh, if your wife said, but you're not the spiritual guy that everybody thinks you are. That, that's shocking <laughs> because you feel that after all these years of practice, you become spiritual. But maybe she is right. So true. <laughs> My wife often tells me, you edit so many of Daji's videos, do you ever listen to him also? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I say, I think it's a beauty. It's, it's a beautiful journey. All I pray for everybody, especially married life, may they all succeed and fulfill their mission mm. and not give up. Mm. Because all of this is a test. Again, I don't want to sound dramatic, but I feel all of this is tests coming alongside. And, and I pray, I pray heartfully that everybody may come out of it successfully. You know? mm. So Pierre, you travel uh, around the world and you play gigs around the world also. Pierre Ravan is, uh, you call it the caravan. The, the caravan that yeah. uh, goes around. And you meet a lot of young people, a lot of young people who are coming to parties like the, like the Sunburn Festival. They are at a stage when, uh, where, you know, they're enjoying the intoxication of the music, but also they enjoy the intoxication of, uh, you know, drinks and substances and things like that. Which is, which is fine as an uh, experiment, but when it goes to the extreme, it can really devastate lives also. 
what is your advice to them? Because uh, these things we associate with music, right? We associate with uh, having a party, having a great time, doing some, uh, you know, there's alcohol, maybe doing some drugs, lines of cocaine, whatever. What, how, what would you advise them? You've, you've been, been at this, the forefront of this kind of uh, thing all your life. I think I saw it all. And to be honest, I wouldn't give them an advice. I would them give them a suggestion to let them still have fun, let them fulfill the intoxication, but I would give them a substitute to it. We said, look, first, why are you going out? Let's clarify that. Okay, let's be clear. You want to go out maybe to date somebody. You want to go out to forget. You want to go out have fun. But in my experience, 90% of people will go out in the good environment of the club. I'm not talking about like uh, commercial places. They really go out to relief, release. Now be intention or forget or dance mm. the night away, right? Sure. Means the intention is release. And for that, Exactly what I'm trying to do with caravan is to tell them, what would you like? A permanent intoxication or? Temporary. A temporary intoxication. Mm. Temporary means it's very fast. You know, as we said, as much as grosser is deeper, but then it's very short term, right? Like people who take ecstasy, they can go after 45 minutes, they, they reach, there is the amphetamine or MDNA who kicks, there is a hormonal thing on the gland, you feel good, you know, even the wind comes, you say, oh my God, I would love. But then what happened after two hours, the amphetamine leaves your system, the downer is so bad, you don't want to go down because you've been into that state, you take another half, and then you go down and you go down, the next week you take more and more, then you're done, it's over. And you will not even experience that anymore. And then again, you come, but you come and you connect your heart and the music is pumping, and you truly feel that pure divine energy, which is very subtle. And you're so in trance. And that keeps you away. And even though when you go back home, you're fresh. And even after that, you remember the track that the DJ was playing. And you still, you connect to your heart and you're grateful. But this, I feel again, we have to let them experience. But I want to tell you something else, Rudy. Now, spirituality is a fashion. Again, the new generation of clubbers going through the psychedelic intoxication means they said, oh, we don't like drugs. We will not take these synthetic drugs like cocaine or ecstasy. They go on the mushrooms or all kind of natural eboga, which is South African, ayahuasca and stuff. So. They do beautiful ceremony with the cacao ceremony. They sit and they say, but well, but I will, I'm asking them. You're still dependent on an external factor, but your intention is nice. You're gathering around the fire because you want to connect to the elders or ancestors, you know, some shamanic chants. Intention is beautiful. But truly, even when you are on that mushroom and you are in that hallucination and in that maya, you really feel that dimension open. Ask yourself, is this truly the reality or it was your hallucination? Your intention is right, but that hallucination maybe didn't go away without again. What do you do the next day? Will you take ayahuasca every day? I had this discussion with some shaman. They said, no, once is enough. Hmm. It opens it. But I showed them an experience that once it happened, the guy stay on the trip. He could never come back on earth and experience why he's that poor means you see is the true extent and it's not the judgment really i make this is my observation and i feel people should go in club i i am not anti-socializing but i tell them have your balance mm. do club i wake up in the morning and meditate do you are you having this willpower then do it mm. that's my message to the youth do both and experience it yourself as a placebo we said you want to take your drugs or drink? Do it once. Then leave it for some time. Do it what I'm telling you. And you yourself decide. Not dogmatic. 
wow, I like that. Hmm. That's hmm. my advice or suggestion to all. Absolutely, absolutely. And are you optimistic about the future? You meet so many people across the world. Are you optimistic about where the world is going? To be honest, what I feel, I, I wouldn't say optimistic. You know, with all the recent things that I don't want to involve politics in our talk, I feel 2024, it will be a lot of changes, but again, in the level of consciousness. This is, this is why I'm optimistic about it, because I can see. But I don't really see a lot of, because now, you know, I live in Paris, but I am always between Paris, Dubai, India. I travel a lot now. I'm going to Colombia for the launch of my perfume. And what I observe and I see, people are tense, people are worried. Kids want to go to school. They don't know what happened if they come back, the kids home. Like Czech Republic, you know, I, I live in Czech Republic for a long time. In the university, the guy from the class who been one of the toughest guy, he came and shot all his friends. Depression. Shot Trump, all his friends. All his friends. Trauma. Mm. Sorry, he shot his father first. Oh my. And then he came in the school with the shotgun. It's got exactly the, the day of Christmas. And everybody thought it's a, it's a terrorist because we are all already so freaked out. Oh, no, he was a normal student guy in the class. But then they realized he had a mental illness. Mm. What I can see, what I can feel, especially traveling a lot, I can see more and more this mental illness and trauma increasing. But why am what I am optimistic about that for that you need more and more inner search. And because of that, nature also provides. Yes, there is destructions, but at the same time, there is a way. All I pray, all I wish first for 2024 is really if we can learn to tune with ourselves. Mm. I mean, instead of trying to, of course, we need to help as much as we can, but first help yourself and see, am I be able to tune with the, this level of the vibration that we had, you know, the message that our Murshid gave? Am I then able, that tune of vibration that I'm tuning, then increase my own family? Let's ask us. If, and then provide it. What are the means I need now, urgently, to, to find this way? And then this egregore can only happen. And of course, wherever we can in the human level to help. And my optimism is that I can feel that there is a lot of openness towards that. Hmm. But this doesn't undermine that I don't see the violence, unfortunately. There are challenges. Yes, there are challenges. And in fact, uh, you know, with social media, there is the additional stress. Uh, we were talking with this about, uh, with uh, Dr. James Doty about this, about how stressful it is to maintain an image or a projection of yourself. And uh, so that creates a lot of stress. We we don't we don't uh, acknowledge it, but it creates a lot of stress that I'm I'm trying to put this image of myself, and I need to maintain it with everybody, and so I'm putting in a lot of energy to maintain this image, and uh, what you are talking about being in tune with yourself, being honest, just being completely open takes away that stress. Yeah, nice. So uh, that so, is what uh, is the need of the hour. Social media, it's it's a big pressure. Especially, look, even myself, after all these years, actually my wife told me, how come you're not on Instagram? Then I realized, wow, I was, I was five, six years late when mm -hmm. I started. Now I don't even have a lot of followers, but even I am under this pressure because if I don't post anything today, let's say, then people will not know what I do. Mm -hmm. Out of sight, out of mind, unfortunately. Sure. But I found my balance that I might not post a lot, but I wouldn't post anything which will be judgmental or post anything which I will not feel. And I think if that could have been the way that people could be truthful and even when they post something, truly post something what you mean, as we said, no, the, mm. the character formation, mean mm. say what you mean, mean what you say. And then, then I think there's no harm in it, you know. Absolutely. 
So as someone who's produced so much music, uh, Pierre, do you have do you have like your favorite artist that you follow or your uh, your own what do you, what kind of music do you listen to unwind? Do you do you enjoy listening to your own music? To be honest, I I enjoyed listening to my own mixes because whenever I mix live and I realize that all those mixes was not even done by me. I mean, I don't want to say something supernatural, but every time I stood behind a DJ booth, I forgot myself. I let, I would say, for me, it was my divine master, but I would say the nature carry on. And when then I record that set and I listen to it, I'm amazed. I'm not talking about in a narcissist way. Oh, what a great set. No, sometimes I realize, oh, well, here you messed up the mix. You know, the mix was not very good. You know, the beat was not properly. But as a whole, again, I realized the journey was amazing. I was, that's why those are sometimes, you know, I'm in the car, especially in the car. That's for me the best moment. I disconnect from one meeting to the other meeting. Then, oh, I want to go to the gym. I have 20 minutes. I blast the music with a good sound system. And I said, did I play that? Okay, that is part of when I want to listen to the music. But except that, I love traditional Persian music, not the pop music. I am actually very much this Iranian pop music killing me. But when I listen to this traditional music, which have a lot of Rumi poetry, and now lately they put a lot of, for example, I wouldn't say fusion, but you add a lot of electronic side of it, mm -hmm. means you keep that electronic edge, but you still keep that essence of the heart. This, those are the music that I love a lot. And just to maybe declare a surprise, I just, I'm working on a track which will be released uh, in March. And I brought the guy from Iran, Tar, and there is a guy who sings in Paris, is a South Iranian song. And I brought the guy from Ibiza who play a reggae funk bass. Wow. And I put wow. the kick behind it. it <laughs> it's amazing. It means it's a spiritual reggae funk house. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Again, but the outcome is there. Wow. wow. But music, I have to be honest with you, it, it plays a very important role with your mood. Sure. You sure. cannot listen to the same style of music. Sure. But the essence should be the same, always touching your heart. Absolutely. You'd be surprised, actually, there's an Iranian song, traditional Iranian song, which has become extremely popular. I know, in this hint, because they put it in the Hindi movie. Yes, Jamal Kutu. Jamal, 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 Jamal. <laughs> hey, and that was the Iranian. <laughs> yeah, it's it's huge. It's everywhere in India. I mean, it's such a popular song because it was used in that And movie. the poor guy who produced it, he already did that. He would have been a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> But it just goes to show that it has see, no language, right? It, and what do you learn out of that? For me, you know what you learn out of that? When there is a time for something to be cooked, the time will come. You might not be around. Sure. This, I mean, so many artists are not around and they become famous. I mean, after, yeah. Look at Van Gogh. He painted all those fantastic yeah, paintings. Exactly. Didn't sell anything. And now... Amazing, yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much, you so much Pierre, Shiri. for taking the time out. It's been absolutely wonderful, and we wish you all the best. And look forward to the 3H line of perfumes coming out and your new track with... Uh, That's so nice. And, and I have to say for all audience that this podcast that you're doing is amazing. You, you are really doing an amazing job. You are opening up in a very different genre of activity, be it a business, I saw spiritual technical uh it means your podcast is amazing please Thank keep you. it up i i hope everybody will tune to it and religiously listen to that because i think everybody has a good story to tell absolutely and, and you are facilitating that and i'm very grateful that you give me the chance to to speak about my journey. Thank you. I learn much more from every Thank podcast you. that, Thank that you so i much. host and Thank, Thank you so much all That's the best so and love to all
Thank you for tuning into this episode of Kana Cast. Please follow and subscribe to Kana Cast on Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. Until next time, woof woof.